it's, it's important to know as a business when that retail store you're going to, the prices just aren't competitive anymore, or when that manufacturer you're dealing with for your private label pro product, the prices just aren't competitive, or when that wholesale or distributor, their prices just are too high and you need to let them go. It's important. It really separates the winners from the losers when you can make that conscious decision, like I need to find a new company to do work. So some things to keep in mind to grow your Amazon business and are building as many relationships as possible is creating as many accounts if you're if you're going the wholesale route as humanly possible or even if you're doing the private label route talking to as many manufacturers as possible and even if you're doing retail arbitrage, building relationships with the managers of the stores that you're doing retail arbitrage with, right? So you can get that backroom access, that side door access, right? You can get access to those pallets that um, they have an influx of or the returns or, or the discounted products before they hit the shelves. Right now we operate a 90% wholesale business, 10% private label, the private label's growing. Sebastian just created, it's actually sitting over here about three feet from us. We got a full pallet um, of products that Sebastian created and I'm super excited about them. We're currently building the listing as we speak. He was just on the phone with uh, one of the team members who's helping us build this and, and we're excited about it. But something to consider, right? Um, we built this business, Sebastian built this business on retail arbitrage. And I think something that a lot of you may not be capitalizing on, that's building relationships with, with store managers. And, and what that can look like is like you have to sell yourself to them and make them know, believe that you can bring them value value right and something that comes to mind is like explaining to them the time they can save by offering you those discount racks before they even have to load up the racks because what that means is hey they give you a call hey uh, John hey Stacy whatever your name is I got 50 products I'm about to put on the discount rack do you want to come pick them up it saves them time they don't have to pay an employee to fill that discount rack just to have you come in with your arm and swipe it all into your grocery cart and then they have to reload it again and refill it again. And then you come the next day and swipe it all into the grocery cart. So by you presenting this idea to them, it could actually save them time, which saves them money and save you time, which saves you money. So it works out for all parties. I mean, right from the get go, uh, you want to try to build any relationships you can that could be advantageous to your business. Uh, early on in RA, uh, you know, for us, we also became close with some of the managers at the different stores and some of the employees there. And they would reach out to us, like Eric said, and let us know when things were going on sale or if a pallet of a product came in. They would call us before they even put it on the floor, knowing that, like Eric said, we could come load it up in our van and, and just leave. And they would never have to even put it on the show floor. Mm -hmm. And we also, of course, took care of them, you know, throw, throw them some holiday money, uh, you know, just, just really took care of them. And, and so it was advantageous for both parties, us and them. Yeah, really any relationship you're building, you need to look what value you could bring to that relationship. If you're just looking for what you can take from the relationship, that relationship's not gonna work. Sebastian talks about it all the time. It's like a girlfriend, boyfriend relationship or any significant other relationship. It's a take, give, take, give, and then gain relationship. You can't just take, take, take and expect the other person to reciprocate. It just doesn't work like that. And business relationships are the same exact way. So you need to give in order to receive. And it's revolutionary. It's 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 how we've built the relationships we've built. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, we've had a lot of help from some of our, our suppliers, you know, billion dollar companies. Uh, why, why do they want to team up with us? Well, they want to team up with us, A, because they know that the way that we handle our business is with integrity, and B, because it's a take-give relationship where we're always trying to help them grow and any opportunities that we see come to the marketplace, we bring it to them and bring up ideas to them about moving certain private label products that they may carry or just inventory that they might have that's stale. So it's not always about what we can gain from them, it's also about how can we help them to grow. Yeah, we continue to build relationships. It's still the foundation of our business. Sebastian just smashed a uh, catalog on, on my desk from a 
a new distributor that I plan on starting to place an order with this week. So I'm excited about that. That's yeah. one of my favorite things to do is place new orders with new companies. But with placing new orders with new companies comes a lot of, sometimes a lot of issues, especially with some of the companies we worked with. Like, uh, I forgot, it was like the small little toys, but they came like case packed with six different kinds in them. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so there's issues. And, and the first time you place that order, sometimes we like to be a little less aggressive. So if there are issues with the products coming in, we didn't go spend $50,000 on a first order review. Maybe only spent $5,000. So if we have to eat some of those issues because we're, we don't want to call them and be on the phone with them complaining for 20 minutes about the misships or the, the mishaps, because that's not good for a relationship. We don't invest a huge amount of money in that first order. So it doesn't tarnish the relationship if something goes wrong with it. Right, and with any new, uh new supplier you may pick up, please be conservative at first, just because like Eric said, kind of just to reiterate, you don't know the quality of the product, you don't know the quality of the company, you don't know how they're gonna handle uh, your delivery. I mean, remember there was that one company we were dealing with and they had the sut on the product? Yeah. Uh, a couple of their products had like this uh, heavy layer of Warehouse sut. dust. Oh, yeah, and uh, so you, you don't know, you know, when you're first ordering with a company, you really don't know how they handle their products, and so you wanna be conservative on the first, second order, and and from there, you know, you, you, you start growing that. One of my favorite things that we do at the end of the year is we review all our distributors. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes this is one of the most challenging things I think for, for us to do sometimes is let go of a distributor that for years produced us ton of revenue, ton of profits, but now their product costs just aren't cutting it for us anymore. So it's it's important to know as a business, when that retail store you're going to, the prices just aren't competitive anymore, or when that manufacturer you're dealing with for your private label pro product, the prices just aren't competitive, or when that wholesaler or distributor, their prices just are too high and you need to let them go. It's important, it really separates the winners from the losers when you can make that conscious decision, like I need to find a new company to do work with. And even on a more micro level too, just ASINs too. We've had ASINs that we were selling truckloads of, mm. truckloads of, and because the climate of the Amazon environment's always changing, uh, we've had to let go and it was hard, but every time we let go, it gives us opportunity to find another one and we do. Mm. And we do, and so will you. So just because a ASIN that was once profitable, uh, maybe right now isn't, doesn't mean you need to hold on for your dear life hoping that it'll get better mm. again. Sometimes you need to let go and look for a new investment, a new ASIN to to really take over uh, that space of where that last one was. We have over 4,000 active ASINs, you know, and you know it fluctuates, but I always say building that healthy portfolio, that healthy online account, that healthy business, and this is how you do it. You have those high profit items that might move a little slower you'll have high profit items that move high volume then you'll have low profit low volume and everything in between and that's what builds a healthy business where year over year we continue to grow this year is by, by far our most profitable year. Mm. And last year was our most profitable year to date as well. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's like that every single year as we continue to redevelop. And I think part of that goes into looking at the year, uh, kind of looking back, seeing the things, criticizing ourselves, seeing mm. where we could improve, and then building the roadmap for next year. You know, I went to, I went to Costco the other day. Uh-huh, did you start scanning? I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to, but um, they got the ill deals on everything over yeah. there. Yeah. But we used to do a lot of purchasing from Costco <clears throat> many years ago, and uh, and it's just every time I go there, it takes me back. Just Sebastian and I would go there for six, seven hours a day and uh, just scan products. And you remember that transition, right? Where it was like, where it went from doing it five days a week to four to three to even one day a week was yeah. challenging. Yeah. Because the wholesale part, took over took off, yeah. and people always ask us like when do you know it just kind of happens yeah. you'll know because it happens because you have a wholesale account or multiple wholesale accounts that are taking up so much of your time that you don't have any more time for all right mm. like even at the end there we were still going once a month yeah we were placing monthly orders from our retail stores we were doing business with to supplement some of the income that and the revenue so we could continue to grow so it's like it didn't it took probably a year and a half yeah. before before we completely cut off retail arbitrage and we came, uh, you know, a 90% wholesale business. Mm -hmm. So it's like, get it where you can get it. Get it what you know. 
If you're selling books right now and books are your bread and butter and you're trying to switch to retail arbitrage, don't stop selling books. Right. Keep selling books. Right. That's your bread and butter. Right. If you're doing retail arbitrage and want to switch to wholesale, don't stop going to stores and buying stuff. That's your bread and butter. Keep going doing retail right. arbitrage. If you're doing wholesale, want to do private label, don't stop doing wholesale. Oh. Get a few private label products and do both. Do all four. Yep. Can't hurt. So any last words to wrap it up, Eric? Yeah, it's hustle o'clock. Every day's hustle o'clock. I, I think the best way to operate for me personally is I just wake up ready to tackle the day. And some days I'm not ready to tackle the day, but I just reflect for a couple minutes on all the beautiful things I have in my life. And it makes coming to work, it makes meeting with new people, it makes just being a presence in life with family, friends, business relationships. It just makes all that that much easier. So really at the end of the day, it's about my perception on life. And, and I change my perception and I changed my life. What about you, Sebastian? My last words are evaluate your business, mm. build a plan, and get ready to conquer. Mm. Stay lit. Stay lit, everybody. <laughs>